you can stop playing. We'll do the same thing we did last time. So exciting to hear a small piece from the upcoming album. Uh, tell me the name, the title of the album, Anamaram. Tell me a little bit about the, the name. Okay, the, um, this album is called Anamaram, and Anamaram is Latin for souls. And this album is, is, is sort of a tribute to people who, in my life, who are very close to me, who have passed on, uh, and also who are very much still alive. Uh, and also, um, anybody in that situation with, with loved ones who like me are just in wonderment at the at the um, at the vibrancy and and beauty and and variance amongst people in our lives it's just a celebration of, of people that I know fantastic mm. it's um, across the three albums now you've worked with the same team of musicians and um, talk to me a little bit about that and perhaps sure. what strengths they brought to each each piece so I have used the same musicians on the on these last three albums. Um, that's because they're my favourite musicians for playing this music. Um, um, I had a long relationship with uh, Barney McCall and Hamish Stewart for many years, playing with Vince Jones and and other ensembles. Um, and we just have a musical kind of um, hookup that's really important. That's the basis from which all of the other music comes, I think. Um, there's, there's not a lot to be said about each of them individually. They're all superb, amazing musicians. And I think, without doubt, they're, they're probably um, national treasures in terms of, of jazz musicians in this country. To get the, uh, the, the big team together, there's eight musicians, is that right? There are eight musicians on this album. I think nine on the last one, and probably six on the first one, yeah. Just in terms of getting people together, it must be complicated, but so people have to come to the one point to record the album and that sense of immediate travel, but in the broader sense, how does travel impact or is it influenced the album in some way? Well, the, the musicians do live in different parts of Australia. We have, um, let's see, we've got three in Melbourne, one in South Australia, one in the Blue Mountains and one in, in Wollongong. So there is travel involved and I'm either travelling there to, to meet up with them or they're traveling to Sydney. But I think the one, the, the recurring theme and certainly f the feedback that I've heard from, from people who have listened to the albums, these are, this is music that is really good to listen to as you are traveling. And I don't know exactly why that is, maybe because the forms are so long or maybe just because I've done so much traveling. I've been to America so many times now and, to, to mix these albums and the last album I went to Israel so these these are really foreign kind of um, more particularly Israel as a, as a foreign locale from which you see really exotic sites um, and I think the music reflects that I think I think this music is good music to listen to it's it can be cinematic and and therefore really good to to listen to as you as you are watching as you're traveling yes so that idea of an extended listen to the album do you think tell me about how the three albums sit together and, the, and maybe the, the journey that through the three of them a, a listener might take? Yeah, this is an interesting thing. I didn't really think about how the three albums would complement each other. But I think, if anything, you have one that's called The Sea. That's the first one, and that's to do with emotion. And, and uh, that was written around the time that my father passed away. Um, and I was just sort of finding my feet as a as a a writer of music, so it was it was uh, it was a very important moment for me. The sea is very much on the ground 
even though it's obviously an ocean, but it's still in planet Earth, so to speak. The next album is called The Remembering and Forgetting of the Air, and it's we're sort of moving up in a way uh, and dealing with the, the um, yes, with the, this idea of memory and, um, and s intangible, intangible things, intangible thoughts, thoughts that are fleeting, and then you, you, you remember them much later, or dreams even. Um, and this most recent album, we're looking further up again to the stars, which is why the, the album cover is a picture of the night sky. And it's really about how we feel about people passing on. Um, it's not always about that. It's not about that alone. But certainly the title track, Anamaram, is about that journey. Um, yeah. Look, it's got a large cinematic, a lot of storytelling inherent in this thing. And is that where you'll head to next? Where, wh what's the next step for you as a, as a writer, as a musician? I think the next step for me as a, as a writer is to move just to a different uh, musical concepts. Um, I've been studying different techniques of, um, I've been studying a little bit of orchestration and also a little bit of um, movie music. So these are areas that I want to further explore. Um, but I'll always be playing with, with people that I love to play with in their, you know, whatever genre they play in. And uh, the main thing for me is just to keep writing. I think that's, a, that's the thing I derive the most joy from, is to write and then play and then hang out. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for some insights into this latest album. Uh, looking forward to extend listen uh, and perhaps maybe take us out with a little a small excerpt from sure. the album. Thank you. Here's an excerpt from Anamaram. <laughs> Thank you.